Hey everybody, Allison here. And in this video, I am going to talk about how to trade when you have a full-time job. Now, <laughs> full-time job could mean anything, right? It could be like me where you're actually out there working for a company and you are, you know, having other responsibilities to do full-time. Could be that you're watching the kids, right? I think these past couple years have certainly taught us as parents how to handle and juggle um, all the responsibilities of having your home and work life kind of crammed together into one. So this could apply um, to a lot of different people and I hope it kind of helps you out and getting you on the right track for your trading journey. So one of the first things that you need to know, right, one of the first rules is make sure that you have time set up for yourself to learn or review trading, right? Whether you're new to the trading journey and you are just starting the process, then you certainly need to give yourself time to dive in and really learn about what you're going to do, right? It's so easy to just go out there and throw your money into something and hope that it works out. But if you really actually wanna be a successful trader, it's just like learning a language or anything else, which I hope doesn't deter anybody, but it's in the sense that you have to study and understand what you are going out there and attempting to do, which is trade and earn money off of, at least how I do it, right? Off of charts and technicals in the market, so that way I can make an income for myself. So that's one of the first things. The second thing, is to set up time to give yourself to actually trade, right? If you have a full-time job where you know that you are having meetings at certain times, right? Where you have to be in and out. Maybe you're a teacher, right? Where you know specifically this is my day here, right? This is my time here. You have to figure out what exactly is the time that you are able to give to trading itself right? And understanding when those hours might be. Is it, you know, I can give myself the first hour of every market open and the last hour of every market open to trade? Can I only give myself 30 minutes a week to be able to trade, right? And so you need to understand how much time that you're actually going to be able to dedicate to trading because it kind of actually ties in and maybe I should have put these rules <laughs> together a bit more. Um, but the second rule kind of ties down in with the seventh rule, which is how much time you can dedicate to the market might determine what strategies you can actually trade in the market. So for example, if you can at least give yourself a couple hours a day, right, especially if they're closer to the open or close, then it's easy to be able to consider day trading, right? Doing quick intraday style trades uh, to be able to put on swing trades, to be able to do maybe a short overnight trade, right? That gives you a bit more flexibility on what the strategies um, you wanna use and how you can apply them, especially, right, if you trade futures, that certainly leaves you open. On the other side though, if you're that person that can literally only trade for 30 minutes on a Wednesday during their lunch break, that's the only time they have, then the strategies you might lean towards are more swing trades, right? Things that have a bigger picture setup and ones that you don't need to be in front of your computer monitoring all the time in order to still be able to benefit and take a profit on the trade idea. So those two rules kind of tie in together. The third thing, and you kind of see a theme here, right? When you have a full-time job, you have to be mindful of your schedule and know exactly how much time you have, where you can dedicate it. I know certainly as a mom of two, <laughs> it has almost come down to like very snippets of, okay, I have a room session. You go down for your nap. I have another room session. You know, I have this time for trading. You have speech therapy then, right? It's all about figuring out that timetable and how much time you have to dedicate to what. And a part of that time is going to have to be figuring out setups, 
right? Actually going through your charts, going through your scans and seeing what is setting up and what isn't. Now, as an intraday trader, right, that might be happening at the same time as you're trading, right? Those two things might coexist together. Whereas if you're that person who can only trade for maybe 30 minutes on a Friday into close or, you know, however that works for you, then you might find yourselves after market hours or on Sundays even going through your charts, going through your scans and saying, okay, what looks good and what doesn't here? What is the trade that I actually want to take? And then of course, right with that is also having alerts in place. So if, especially if you can't be in front of your computer all time, all the time watching the charts necessarily, right? So that you actually can see what's happening when it's happening. Alerts are such a saving grace because you can have alerts set up to say, hey, here are price targets I have for the underlying price. Um, let's say in this case, right, we have a bearish move to the downside right now in the market. And we're like, man, my next target to the downside, you know, I'm just throwing out a number here, is 4,400. Well, I know I am working throughout the day. So let me just go ahead and set an alert here right? Create an alert for 4,400. That way, whether I'm still sitting here at my desktop, right? Maybe actually doing something else for work or whether I'm out and about, and maybe it's a notification on my mobile, I'll know when the price gets down to 4,400. Or let's say it's telling me I need to get out of a trade, right? What if I'm in a bearish trade and it's popping to the upside? Then I can set an alert here at resistance, right? Let's say at 4,600, that says, Allison, you need to consider closing that bearish trade idea because everything's starting to reverse, right? Maybe that is why you have that alert out there. But you can have alerts set up for things like the underlying price itself. You can have alerts set up for actual trades, right? All a different bunch of type of alerts that you can set <laughs> while trading. But the point is that you have them ready to go and that you use them to your benefit, right? To let you know when the underlying price is doing something that you either want to see or maybe you don't want to see and need to take protection on so that way you are being mindful of the capital that you have out there at risk um, after the alerts in place right right in tune with that is having orders prepped and ready to open and what i mean by that is if you're one of those traders right who could only trade a couple times a week, or even if you're an intraday trader, you should know what strategy that you're looking to implement. Are you looking to get into a long call? Are you looking to get into a broken wing butterfly, right? So it's about kind of already having that strategy priced out on the option chain, right? And saying, yes, I wanna buy 100 shares of QCOM, which I do not, um, at least not right now. But right, I could have it set up like that. Or here on SPX, right, I have a butterfly set up saying, hey, let's go ahead and set up a broken wing butterfly for tomorrow's expiration. Here are the strikes that I'm looking at, right? So now I have this already set up and good to go, or even if it doesn't kind of save it like it does on my Tastyworks platform here, uh, you know, I have the strikes written down in my journal and those are good to go. I know the trade idea I want to consider implementing. I know roughly around the strikes that I maybe want to implement. You know, I might have to modify that if we gap up or down and open, of course, right? If I, you know, need to modify it, but I have a good idea of the strategy and what I'm looking for on the chart and how I possibly want to go about trading that setup. Um, and then, of course, once you have the open trades, right, you need to go and have closing orders in place. So this is my day trading account. This is a locked in profit with the market falling. QCOM, there's no way it's coming back here. But let's say I am out and about tomorrow. There's no way, right, I can go about this. Well, I can go ahead and set up a closing order and then I can send that out and have it good to go. Let's say I want to get out of this for an extra 20 cents of credit. Right, which you know would technically be easy on a 2.5 with spread if we we're <laughs> anywhere near those strikes. Um, of course, I want it for net credit, right? So I can go ahead, review, send this out, and find the order living out here under activity, and I have that closing order set up in place. So that way, if I'm out and about and QCOM, let's say, does end up popping up tomorrow, right? Let's say some news comes out overnight. QCOM makes the deal of the century, and all of a sudden the price is at $200. 
well, great, I have my order set up and ready to go for that potential bounce move if it happens, and that way I don't have to be around my computer in order to see it. And of course, if things go to go the opposite like they currently are, right, if things are selling off, then I'd have that alert in place saying, hey, things are selling off, you might want to look at taking some different action with that good till cancel order you have out there already. Um, so certainly, right, it's about having checks and balances in place, you will. You have the time set up to actually be able to dedicate to trading and knowing what that time looks like for you, right? Sometimes, you know, like last year, it was all over the place for me as I was trying to go to doctor's appointments for the kids and, you know, trading and trying to find a new house. And I mean, it was, you know, my brother's wedding, right? It was all over the place. So you have to understand what time you have dedicated for your schedule. And it might fluctuate from week to week, month to month, right? But it's all about having that game plan in place on top of when you actually have the trades out there, when you actually have that capital risk floating out there where you're looking to make the profit on, having those alerts, having those orders already set up, so that way, you know, you know if you're not going to be around your computer that everything is good to go and work automatically for you or at least notify you when it's not working out the way it should until the next time you can visit the chart and that trade idea. Um, and then the last rule, let me go ahead and pull back the rules here really quickly. There we go. So having your orders, right, have alerts in place, have orders set up and ready to go, having your good till cancel and closing orders set up, um, you know, or your profit recycled orders if you like to profit recycle, how much time you can dedicate, you know, I've been drilling that into your head. And then, of course, the last one, which should always be the first rule no matter what you're doing um, in trading, is be mindful of your risk, right? If you know that you're not going to spend much time available to trading, right, then you might be putting on a little bit less capital risk until you really feel like you have footing on what you're doing and you feel the need to be able to maybe put a little bit more in. Or understanding, right, if you do have that small amount of time, maybe with the capital it's better suited to do something like shares where you can hold it longer term, kind of sit through the ebb and flow and not have the theta decay worry about it. And that way you can go about your job but still have this investment in place for you. Um, but you should always be mindful of your capital risk, especially if you're first starting out. It's so easy to just want to put it all in in one basket and see that, you know, times 10, you know, 100 plus return on whatever trade that is. And it's just it's not the smart move to do, because if you're like me and you actually knock it out of the park with those first few trades, <laughs> you are not very mindful of your risk going forward. And that one trade can eat up all your profits. Right. I didn't really have a quite of a good understanding of risk when I very first started trading. Right. I had I certainly had an understanding, but it's not to what it is today. Um, and when you're, you know, on a roll, right, because you've been paper trading, you've been dedicating that time to learning and then you're on a roll with doing what you're doing. It's very easy to lose sight of how much capital you have actually out there. And then when you do take that hit, especially if you don't have it allocated properly, it can completely right wipe out any of the gains that you took prior and still find yourselves in that for an overall loss. So no matter what, but especially if you know you're doing other things throughout the day, just be mindful of that risk, right? You have everything else in place, you have your alerts, you know, you have the time dedicated to finding the setup, you have everything else good to go. But the very first place that you can really start is always be mindful of your risk before you actually put it out there and opening a trade. So these are the rules that I have learned to live by <laughs> as a person who does have a full-time job, right? Who is also trading, who is also balancing the family life at home um, and the kids and taking them to their activities and understanding what does work. And then, you know, when my trading starts to suffer is when I'm not really abiding by these rules, right? Whether it's being mindful of risk or not really giving myself the time to de dedicate to scans and setups, um, you know, or not having my alerts in place to let me know when things are happening if I'm not sitting at my computer. And so these 
I feel like are really great things to take into consideration if you're trying to trade and have a full-time job at the same time. So best of luck to all of you on your trading journey. As always, may the trade be with you. Thank you so much for joining me in this video, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Bye. Hey, Allison Ostrander here, Director of Risk Tolerance at Simpler Trading. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and comment down below to help us out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can get notified when we release our next video. And if you want to watch us trade in real time using our own money, go to simplertrading.com to learn how to sign up. As always, may the trade be with you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.